Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the key differences between C and C++, help you decide which one you might want to learn. Before we start though, I wanna mention that whichever one you choose, it's going to be okay. It's so easy to overanalyze, thinking about which one to learn, when the reality is if you learn one language, learning the second language is going to be a lot easier. Don't worry so much about picking the wrong language to start with. People think about this way too much. The reality is you can learn multiple languages and it's going to be all right. My personal opinion, the TLDW, the too long didn't watch of this, is that if you're not sure and you just want a quick answer, I'm going to suggest C++. That's not to say C++ is better than C. It was just what I would choose for various reasons. C++, in my opinion, gives you a better chance of getting a good job. It's used more so you can work in more environments. It introduces a lot of abstractions and features that make it a lot easier to work with things such as strings or dynamic arrays or whatever it may be. It's also more similar to some of the other programming languages out there, so it has things like object-oriented programming, which C does not have. With the exception, if there is a specific reason you need C and you know of that reason, then obviously go with C programming. But if you don't have that reason, most of C is going to be included in C++. So a lot of people say C++ is a superset of C. It's not 100% accurate, but that concept is fairly close to being accurate, meaning you can code C inside of C++. So by choosing C++, you're not really giving up anything. You're just getting new features. With new features though, brings new things to learn. The C++ language is much more complex than the C programming language. The C programming language is actually fairly simple. You can learn the majority of key concepts rather quickly. C++ on the other hand is fairly complex. It's probably not something you're gonna master in a weekend. In terms of application, you're most likely only going to be using C for really low level stuff, whether that's embedded systems or operating systems. C++ is going to be used in a lot of other things such as video games, video editing software, blockchain technology, and much more. And as we go through this, I wanted to mention that I am working on a C, C++ course. So if that's something you wanna be notified when it's out, I'll drop a link down in the pinned comment slash description. So check it out and get on that waiting list. So let's talk about when you would want to use C over C++. We already briefly mentioned this. It's a simpler language. So if you don't want that added complexity, then C may be the way to go. Now it's kind of confusing because it's a simpler language, but this can actually make some concepts more challenging because it doesn't abstract away as much. So for example, C++ has a string class, which makes it really easy to work with strings. It's a little more complicated in C because there's not as many features to abstract away some of the challenges. C may not seem simple at first, and that's because it's not doing a bunch of stuff behind the scenes. You would use C if you want to write as close to assembly as possible without actually writing assembly. It's also going to most likely be the most portable language because writing a compiler for C is going to be a lot easier than writing a compiler for C++ because the language is simpler. That being said, C++ is also very widely used, so I personally can't think of any scenarios where I can use C, but I can't use C++. But I'm just mentioning that could be the case, so that's something you might want to consider. The only other reason I can think of to use C is if you're given a C code base and your boss says, hey, I want you to use C, <laughs> which in that case, maybe that's what you have to do, but I would heavily consider some of these new features introduced by C++, which we're going to go over now. The first one is object-oriented programming. C++ gives the ability to think of things in objects. So you can create your own types and you can attach functions or what would be known as methods to these types, which can allow you to very easily organize real world applications. Data can be represented in code much easier. You can describe the structure of the data, but not only that, you can manipulate the data using methods, something you can't do in C. With this comes some of the object-oriented programming principles, which include encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance, which gives you more capabilities to design your application however you wish. We've talked about a few examples of this, the big one being string, which allows you to very easily work with strings. You don't have to worry about terminating the string with a null character. All that is hidden from you and the string can grow in size or shrink in size without any problems. 
all that is done behind the scenes. There's also a vector class, which is going to do that same style of hiding the details, the abstraction, but now for dynamic arrays. This prevents you from being required to guess the size of an array if you don't know how much data is going to go into it. You can just keep it small and then grow the size of it over time as your data needs increase. This would be a lot harder in C where as mentioned you might need to guess the size for a static array or use dynamic memory allocation which is going to be a lot more complicated. In C++ you're also going to get a lot of experience working with the C in and C out objects which will make it a lot easier working with input and output. It might be a little bit more complicated in C. The other final thing to mention is that C does have structs which is the closest thing to object-oriented programming inside of C, but the key difference is this is for creating custom types, but doesn't allow you to attach functions to these types. So you don't get all of the organization of object-oriented programming, and you don't get some of those object-oriented principles talked about earlier. The next big feature of C++ that was introduced was templates. This allows you to write code that is more generic and will work with multiple types. Now we can create functions or classes to refer to not just a specific type Type, one type, but it can be more generic and work with multiple types. You may write a function, for example, to swap two values, and that could work with any type. These templates are then used to generate functions at compile time for the various types used in your code. The next major thing introduced by C++ is references. So this will allow you to avoid the use of pointers when uh, it's not necessary to use a pointer, you can just use a reference. I have videos on the differences between pointers and references, but in general, you should always prefer references. The next big thing is operator overloading. So any operator can have multiple meanings depending on the context. You can overload these operators to do whatever you want. The last feature introduced by C++ I wanted to mention is namespaces. This will allow you to basically scope identifiers so that you can avoid naming conflicts. This is really handy if you have some library that might use some variable names and you're also using those variable names. You don't have to worry about going through and changing all of your code assuming you set up your code appropriately and you're not just saying using namespace STD, for example. These are just some of the major differences between C and C++. We talked about a lot of the features introduced by C++, which can help you see that the programming language C is a lot simpler. There's a lot less features. It's going to be a lot easier to learn. And it's a trade-off. As you add these new features, it can become more complex more potential issues could show up, but it could also make your life easier if you're building complex software. Ultimately, as mentioned, I think learning either one is going to be okay. I would recommend learning C++. You can use some of the C features inside of C++ if you want, or if you're just trying to learn C as well. But by learning C++ as comprehensively as possible, you're also going to learn a lot about C programming. So it's kind of a win-win in that scenario if you're willing to put in the time to learn C++. Those are the differences I thought of, but I'm sure there are many that I've missed. So if you know of any others, drop them in the comment section down below. And whether you want to learn C or C++, I'm going to be releasing content on both of these. I have a lot of C and C++ content on my channel already. But if you want to see the new upcoming stuff, be sure to subscribe. And I will have a link down below in the pinned comment or description, which will link to my newsletter where you can get notified when I release a C, C++ course, which is going to cover all of this material pretty comprehensively. So hopefully you're excited for that. I'm excited to get back into some content here on YouTube. It's been a little while, so let's go ahead and make a lot of really good videos. We're going to be learning all about C and C++ for the next little bit of time. So I'm pretty excited and hope you are as well. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one and be sure to subscribe.